welcome to my review of the Lumix 12-60mm f3.5-5.6 to kit lens. So it's been nearly two weeks since my last Red Bull. I have been cleansing the negative energy out through the pores of my skin. And I now live a life dedicated to consuming matcha green tea almond milk and Bob Ross's very own positive energy drink. So considering the melodramatic classical music I used for the intro, other than that anime section of the intro, it makes more sense if I'm reviewing a Leica lens for this video such as the 12-60mm f2.8-f4 to F4, or even the uh, 15mm 1.7. But no, it's just your basic zoom lens with the most least exciting variable aperture. So. Welcome to my channel because I get to do whatever I want. All right, so this is the lens itself. It costs right under 500 bucks, but mine came with the Lumix G85 as a kit. And for some reason, you cannot buy the G85 body only. And that also goes for the newer G95. The housing of the lens is plastic, but not that cheap tourist lens kind of plastic. It uses a metal mount which I'm very thankful for. It also uses a rubber gasket around the mount so that means the lens itself is weather sealed and for some reason this lens is fully collapsed at around the 20 millimeter mark instead of the widest end at 12 mil. The physical dimensions of the lens is very compact considering its focal length of a full frame equivalent of 24 mil to 120 mil. It also has optical image stabilization built in and that can and work with the in-body stabilization. The focus ring is a little too thin but at least it is smooth. Although it's a non-linear focus by wire system, it's actually not too bad. But I don't even use the focus ring for video because surprisingly, I use the autofocus. So here are the rules for using autofocus on the Lumix G85. I am going to assume that you guys are aware of Panasonic's own autofocus system, which is their DFD contrast based autofocus, which is not the best for video, especially when compared to Canon's dual pixel autofocus or Sony's hybrid autofocus. So for the G85, you have to shoot in 1080p, so no 4K. Fortunately, you still can go up to 60 frames per second and use IBIS at the same time. Doing so will not affect the autofocus performance. You have to be in the one area focus mode and and of course, you gotta be in good light. So yeah, that's it. Try again. Nice shot.
so far, these are the accessories I used when filming the test footage. Of course, we got the Lumix G85, but I do have a Rode Video Micro mounted onto the hot shoe, and obviously the 12 to 60 kit lens. But I have a variable ND filter by SLR Magic. The reason why I use this filter is because you can change the polarization effect. Since a variable ND filter is essentially two polarizers on top of each other, so for example, you can make the grass greener, make the sky bluer and the water clearer, filter through the amount of reflections on your Tesla, and make yourself student debt free. <sighs> I'm gonna go to bed. I actually did a review of this filter before. In fact, this was my very first review on YouTube. So pretty much, I put this on, I slap this on, or screw it on. I could adjust my level of ND. Once I find that, I grab the whole thing, um, rotate it to, to, what? Rotate it so, how do I say that? Rotate it so I could find the right level of polarization. I need to sleep. And then you gotta hold on to the front rings and then grab this loose ring over here and screw it back. So it locks onto the front of the step up ring or lens and yeah that's that's how it works but i took it down because i wanted to remake a much better version now because this lens have a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6 in most cases you are not gonna get that background blur but if you do want to try to get as much subject separation as possible, here are the two things to do for the best results. Zoom in at 60mm, wide open at f5.6, and have your subject up close. Holy moly, this lens is sharp! And I gotta remind you, this is also a kit lens. If you told me this was shot by the Leica 12 to 60 millimeter lens, I would believe you. Like you could see each individual fiber of the feathers there. All right, moving on to a few other pictures I took with this lens. You could see a very subtle purple flare represented as Thanos throwing off a little green alien Gomorra flare off a cliff in order to get the soul stone. When I try to think about what lens is this best suited for, I think about landscape photography. Now I don't do landscape photography and I'm pretty sure I as well suck at it, but this next section of the review is inspired by photographer James Popsies. There's a sheep making a beeline towards me. Yeah, you stop there. James is a Lumix ambassador. He uses the Lumix G9 and recently replaced his G85 with the G95 as a backup camera. He also used to have the full frame Nikon D750, a camera I used back when I was in film school. And yes, although this is a Nikon DSLR, its 1080p image is pretty nice and sharp with great colors. The only thing that sucks about this camera is its audio preamps. And James happens to be a very talented landscape photographer. So will I take landscape photography a shot? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, I, I'm good fam.
Yeah, I lied. Well, I kinda lied. I assume landscape photography requires a lot more planning, like spending gas money on getting to the location or scheduling on when it's the best time to shoot, and most likely a lot of hiking. Well, you see, what I'm doing right now is barely landscape photography. I didn't even do any research about the best places to shoot in Yosemite. Hell, I didn't even do any research about landscape photography at all. I was just invited to go at a random time. So what I'm doing is more of a, hey, this looks cool, I'm gonna take a picture of it. Basically, I have no idea what to look for when it comes to landscapes, but this is what I got. Holy moly, this lens is sharp. So a few things I want to take note of. I don't really do highly detailed and scientific tests if you haven't noticed yet. Like for example, what's the sharpness like in every aperture throughout the zoom range? I don't do much of that mainly because it's very tedious. So instead I just want to show you guys what is possible with this lens. And it's going to be like that for every review I do from now on. Lenses these days typically share the same characteristics. Like for example, they are mainly sharp in the center but a little soft around the edges and whatnot so it's not really worth mentioning these tiny details unless it is noticeable enough then i will present the issue but anyways i want to add on to a few things about this lens going back to the video autofocus I did forget to mention that using the one area focus mode still isn't as reliable as a Canon or a Sony camera. It is just the best of what this camera can do at the moment. Another thing I noticed was the behavior of the stabilization when shooting wide at 12 millimeters. When walking or simply panning a tad bit too fast, the stabilization is a little jerky and the corners of the image tends to warp, but I am sure it is the fault of the camera. But when when being stagnant, it works fine. Now let's talk about how I use this lens. When it comes to video, I use this lens as a f5.6 constant aperture zoom. Keep in mind, the lens will change exposure while you zoom, but it will return back to its set exposure. And if I need some more light, I use this as a 12mm f3.5 prime. When it comes to photography though, it doesn't matter. Or uh... I, I, I didn't really care. Now, if I were to upgrade from this lens, which one would I pick? I would want the Olympus 12 to 100 millimeter f4. It has really good range and uses a constant aperture, but it is best to stay away from third party lenses cause it's only Lumix lenses that are DFD capable. But that is if you wanna shoot video with autofocus. So my other options would be the Leica 12 to 16 millimeter f2.8 to f4 or the Lumix 12 to 35 f2.8. This took me a long time to think about which one would I pick, but I am leaning towards the Leica lens because of its range. But if the Lumix G85 were to have the option to have the 14 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6, I would pick that instead of the 12 to 60 kit for three reasons. First is the range, obviously, and second is the widest focal length is 14 millimeters instead of 12. Yeah, that could be a downside, but shooting 14 instead of 12 can minimize the jerky movements by the ibis and the warping of the edges of the image. But if that still doesn't work, then third, disable the ibis in the camera and only use the optical image stabilization. You can't do that with the 12 to 60 because there isn't a switch, but the 14 to 140 does. And yeah, I think that's it. That's pretty much everything I gotta say for this review and yeah bye